Okay, so I'm going to present an extension for Genially by Scape, which you can use for conditional text, which sounds boring, but is actually quite fun. So I'll show you what it looks like. So for example, on the first slide of your presentation, you could ask the players for their name and their age. So if I put in my name here, I'm not going to put my age, I'll just say I'm 12. And then I go to the next slide and now it has remembered my name and my age and it's giving me this little sentence here. And the great thing is it will remember it for the rest of the presentation. So you could have a text on each slide, which is personalized to me, which always says, oh, Julia, what do you want to do next? And so on. So that's great. There are also some extra op options you can have. So for example, if I go back and I put in a certain value, so for example, I say I'm 18 now and I go to the next slide. It's giving me an extra message here, which is saying sweet 18. And I can even go further. And depending on the age, I can give different messages. So if I say 18 is a boring age, but if I put in here 14, for example, so just put in a different name so you can see it actually works. Let's say I'm John is 14. So now it says, hello, John. 14 is a good age and here 14 is my favorite number so depending on the code you use you can have different reactions so there's also this extension to this extension which is uh, adding buttons as well that will change the outcome so in this case it's asking me about my opinion as well let's put in I do like games and then it says let's play if I say I don't like games, then it would say go home. If I say maybe, then it says give it a try. And even though I didn't put my name and my age in again, it remembers it until I put in something new. So the whole time it will remember me as J and 13. Um, you can add an extra button to delete it at some point if you want to. Okay, so now I show you what this looks like. So let's start with the text box. So that's the first thing you need to create. And for that, you need this yellow page, which looks quite complicated, but it's not too bad. And here you need to decide what your variable is called. So for example, in this slide here, I had two different variables. One was called name, one was called age. So I go down here and you need to use this in preview mode. So go into preview mode. And now here, the font name, I'm just going to use one of these because it's easier. The font must be on the slide that you're using it from to show correctly. So it needs to be in the question, for example, or in the title. Then I need my variable name. So in the first case, it's name. So make sure you spell this the same way every time you use it. And here's my preview box. It's a bit small, so I can change it here. I can make it a bit higher, a bit longer. I can change the border as well. I can change the color and so on. So lots of things you can uh, modify here. And now I need to copy this text here. So I just do Control C and copy it. And then I can go onto a slide. Let's do an empty one. And I go to Insert, Other, and then this is where I paste my code and I go to insert and now it's entered that text box and it is now linked to the variable name. So whatever I put in the in this text box will be will be the value for name. OK, it's always a bit too big, so you just need to make it a bit smaller so it doesn't overlap other things. So I could put name here so people know what they need to write in be careful that this text box isn't too big because that can cause problems so make sure they can reach that box underneath there so just make it a bit smaller okay then on the next page i need my code so you need the template so the blue template here and really you just need these two elements the group text and this yellow box for it to work. The purple box is if you want to reset everything. So you could put this at the 
very beginning or the very end of your presentation when you want uh, everything to be deleted. And I create a new slide because you can't have your text and the input box on the same page. Uh, it doesn't quite work, so they need to be separate pages. So on here, I put this and now I need to put in my text. So the best thing is really to start from the examples that are on this template. So let's start with an easy one. We'll start with just the uh, red one. So we go on here and um, so I need these two symbols here. And in between, I need to put the name of the variable. So my name here is just name. So this means that this part here will be replaced by whatever the player puts into the box that's associated with the variable called name. So I could just say hello and then it will be followed by the name. The important bit is that you need to group it with this group text element here. So group them together. It will be invisible later on so you should only be able to see this. So if I look in preview mode it still remembers that I put in J earlier in the text box. So it, it still says hello J but if I go back and put something else in say I'm called Sam here we go so now it's replaced that element with Sam because that's now the new value of name. So be careful when you use this extension because you can't have a paragraph marks in your text box. So if I um, go in here and put more text in down here with a, uh, a space in between, it wouldn't work anymore. So if I go in here, I'm not allowed to do that. Now if I go into preview, you can see it's messed it up here. So if you want to have a, a space in there, you need to do it in separate text boxes and then group each one with the group text element. So now it works that it shows the name there and it shows the name there. So you can use the variable several times on one page. Okay, so now we get to the more complex version. So this one is the conditional one. So we'll copy this one here. Okay, let's put it here after my text box. So you can see it says name of variable. So it is name or I could use age. Then I put in the value I wanted to take. So for example, John. So only if the person is called John, then I want this text to be displayed. So it says if the name, if the variable is John, then it will say this and it will say um, my son is also called John. There you go. So if they put anything else, then they don't get that message. Okay, I also need the yellow box from here and I need my group text element. Okay, so I need to group this with my code. Okay, so if I go in here, if I say my name is um, Sam, then I don't get any message. But if I say my name is John, then I get this message. My son is also called John. And now you can step, take it up a step as well. And you can take this long one here. So that gives you even more options. Let's go back. Okay, so we ungroup this and instead we're using this one. Okay, so still my name variable is still name. Well, let's go with the age this time. So let's say the age value, if it is 18, so text if value is true, there I want to display you are an adult now. And then the second part is if they put anything else. So if they're not 18, but something else, I just want to say good age. Okay, and then I need to remember to group it again. 
I can do control G to group things as well, which makes it quicker. So I go in here, age, if I put 14, it would say good age. But if I put in 18, it will say you're an adult now. Okay, and you can make this as long as you want. So uh, you can have several of these as well. So you can make this even more complex by just copying pasting this in a row. So you could have several different reactions depending on the input. So let's say the person is 50, then I want them to tell, uh, to read, you are old. Oh, I mean, mean. So just make sure you've got uh, this symbol in front and at the end of each part of it. So in the middle you will have two if you've got several. Um, so we could even put a third one. So let's say they're 20. I want to say um, great time. Okay, so they will only get one of the three messages depending on what they put in. So if we go back here and we say we are 18. You're an adult now. If I put in something random, 33, I don't get anything. If I get 50, then it says you are old and so on. So if it is a question where there may be only a few possible answers, you could have a different feedback for each one. Okay, now we get to the buttons. <coughs> so the buttons are quite good if you want to restrict the answers to certain um, to certain answers. So basically, yes, no answers, um, and you don't want the, the players to write something like okay instead because then it wouldn't recognize it. So in those cases, it might be safer to have a button. You could also have something like, are you male or female? If then it makes a difference to how you're addressing the person later on. Um, or uh, ask them their opinion. Are you confident or not about this game and so on. So for this, you need some extra elements that are on this template here. So we need the multi button, this list of values here and an extra yellow box. So we need two yellow boxes now. If we go back um, to one of those simpler ones over here. Okay, so we've got two yellow boxes and for each button, we will need one of these lists. So let's find uh, some buttons. I'll just make something really simple. Just um, red and green for yes and no. Do a red one and a green one. So your button can be a picture, it can be a word, it can be a shape like here. And now this multi button, I need one for each option. So I copy and paste and you can see that it has changed the numbering now. So it says multi button X and the numbering is important. So we need to get out of the slide and back in again and that will reset it. Now I can see that this one is zero, this one is one. Be careful, every time you copy and paste and every time you group and ungroup, it will mess with the numbering. So think carefully if you need to group or ungroup things. Uh, and each time you do it, you now then need to go out of the slide and back in again to check. Okay, but now it's good. We want zero and one. So it always starts with zero, then one, two, three, and so on. Okay, so now I group this one together. You see it has changed to button X again. And we group this one. Now we just go out and in. But because I've grouped them in the right order, the numbering is now okay again. So zero and one. Okay, so we need two lists. And this variable, let's say the question is, do you like the game, yes or no? So we name our variable game. That needs to be the same for both of them. Then the value, one will be the value yes, and one will be the value no. And the numbers refer to the numbers after multi-button. So multi-button zero is yes, multi-button one is 
no. So this one needs to be changed to no. And then if I had another one, let's say I also have maybe, so I go out and back in again, so I can see this one is called multi button two. So I could make another one. There you go. And change the two and maybe. Okay, so this now is basically the same as the textbooks earlier. So it knows that the value has been changed once the button is clicked. So I can treat this just like these ones above here. Actually, it's better to have these on the same slide as what I put in my name. Let's put them over here. So we'll put them here. Okay, so let's say we want a certain message when they click yes. So I need another text. So I need one of those uh, longer codes. Let's put this in here. So in this case, the name of the variable was game because that's the one I used in the list earlier. I need to change this to game. And I want the value to be yes. So if they click the green button and then text if the value is true. So if they say yes, then I want this to say great. And I could do another one for no. So if I just copy the whole thing, paste it next to it. So I change the value from yes to no. And then I can say something like, so sad. Okay, and now I need to remember to group this all together again. Group, group, group. And now I can try it out. So if I go back to this slide here. So I put in my information and I do like games. So I click the green button. Unfortunately, it doesn't give you any feedback. So it's um, quite a good idea to maybe link it with another extension which will then get feedback or to put a link so that if you click the button it will automatically take you to the next slide and at least the player knows they have properly clicked it okay so now it's giving me the feedback great so if i go back and i say no i don't like games and it will say so sad and it would carry on in all other slides as well of course so on each um slide i could now have a text saying Oh, I'm so glad you like games because here's another one and so on.